thank you all for being here. This, um, this meeting is about the Handle with Care program. We are recording this meeting. Um, and so if you'd like to turn your camera off, you're welcome to do that. Um, change your name to whatever you want it to be, but um, we will be recording it so that we can use it in the future for trainings. Um, everybody was muted on entry. We ask that you stay on mute um, just to minimize background noise. Use the chat for questions. We'll do questions at the end of the meeting. We're aiming for a half hour. We're gonna to try to get you guys out of here quick, um, but feel free to put questions in throughout the meeting and we'll answer as we go. And then we'll take some questions at the end too. So it is my pleasure to introduce um, our district attorney, Timothy Cruz. He's gonna open up the meeting for us. Uh, thanks, Katie. Uh, it's, it's good to virtually see everybody. Uh, hopefully we're gonna have this behind us pretty soon, all this uh, Zoom stuff, we can be start meeting again. Uh, face to face, as you all know, in your roles, whether they be in police or whether they be educators, you know, their challenges are unlimited normally, and now they've certainly been exacerbated during the pandemic. So, uh, for all the, uh, your efforts uh, in these difficult times that you've had to adjust, you've had to navigate uh, and do your job, most importantly, I want to thank you for all your efforts. Uh, you know, here in the DA's office, uh, a lot of what we do, the majority of what we do, quite honestly, occurs in the courtroom. Uh, but we've, for a long time, uh, recognized our broader duty to, to do not only prosecution of cases, but also try to develop partnerships and resources here in the county and, uh, and beyond. Uh, you know, at the end of the day, our job is to protect the community. And I think you'll all agree with me that the best way to protect the community is to ensure the healthy development of the next generation of kids. And that's what this is about. Uh, so during my time as, as district attorney, uh, and it's been uh, almost 20 years now, uh, you know, we try to make trauma sensitivity and the education of adverse childhood experiences a priority, ACEs. Over the years, we've dedicated time and resources to implement trauma sensitive training for schools and police. We're patented with great agencies like the United Way of Greater Plymouth County. Uh, and one of the programs that we've had uh, for the last few years is Handle with Care. Um, you know, Handle with Care started out, uh, not as Handle with Care started out here in Brockton. I'm not sure if Eddie's talking about that today, but uh, when it started out here, you know, he and I and a lot of good people working hard trying to deal with, with gun violence and drug violence here in the city of Brockton. And it was a very successful program with training learning policy initiative and mass advocates and a lot of really good people, a lot of good trainings. Um, and it worked. It worked for that uh, during, during the time that we used it. So that you know, back in 2013, 2014, when the opiate crisis came back up, it was time to just get back into this, into this mode, dealing with ACEs, dealing with adverse childhood experiences, all the things that you guys see, whether you call it that or not. Uh, in that pilot program that we did in Brockton years back, there was an 80% reduction in suspendable issues at that time period uh, in the city. And that's because of the great work that the, the, the police were doing, the teachers were doing, the teachers knew that I recognized the trauma and what to do with it. So as we flash forward today, uh, we're all dealing with lots of changes. Um, and you are, each and every one, you're dealing with adversity and uh, the challenges that you face. And unfortunately for lots of kids in our community, lots of kids who are either at the scenes of crimes or when police respond to overdoses, whatever it be, the pandemic is not the only ACE that's really out there. And that's really the way I look at it. It's an additional ACE that's out there that a lot of kids are dealing with uh, mental health issues and problems and not getting into schools. And hopefully we're gonna be able to work all that out very shortly. Um, but you know, we recognize the trauma sensitivity and the trainings and the resources are really pertinent and they're pertinent now more than ever. Uh, and that we need to make sure our agencies can communicate uh, the, so that the kids who are exposed to this trauma, uh, we can deal with their needs. And that's what this is about. This is uh, trying to become a handle with care community. Uh, and I'm encouraging everybody's department, everybody's school uh, to take advantage of the free trainings and the materials that we have to offer. Uh, the benchmarks uh, are there, how to become a handle with care community. Uh, we will provide training for all staff, including responding offices, supervisors, SROs, school administrators, and teachers. We'll have an MOU uh, with a working agreement with community partners, including law enforcement, fire, EMS, schools, mental health providers, a written handle with care policy, and regular meetings with community partners, because as we all know, uh, nothing ever stays in that one direction that you start out at, that we continue to proceed down that road. So if you are able and if you are willing uh, to meet these benchmarks, we will work with you and promote your status as a handle with care community. 
We will include that in press releases, the inclusion of your community on our Handle with Care website and social media recognition. Progress continues to start with education and awareness. I hope you find today's training informative and practical. And our goal is to help educators, police, fire, fire departments, hospitals, service providers, to add just another tool to the tool belt. A lot of this information is set out on our website. Uh, so if you have any other questions, uh, they want to see some of the information, handle with care, uh, PlymouthDA.com has all that stuff. So I'm going to kick it back now, I believe, to Katie. But I just want to thank you all for all the great work that you do every day, making our kids safer uh, and making sure that we can make our county better and safer for our kids. So thanks a lot. Thank you so much um, for that introduction, DA, and for being here to kick off this meeting for us. Um, so we have a panel of four panelists who are going to talk about their experiences in implementing Handle with Care in their communities and what that's been like. Um, so first up for today is Chief Michael Batiri. Go ahead. Thanks, Katie. I appreciate it. And I really appreciate um, being uh, included in today's conversation. I see a lot of colleagues on here from different departments. And uh, I think that uh, DA Cruz hit it on, on the head when he talked about, I think we're all doing things and we have been for years, but it might not have been called Handle with Care. We're trying to formalize it and get everyone on the same page, but we've all know, known that there's a communication link between police and schools that's critical. We look at it as in a lot of ways, we have this front row seat to a problem. We, we respond to these calls. We know something happened. We know there was a traumatic incident at the house uh, and in, in, in the old days, years ago, we would just go on to another call. We would make sure things were okay. We'd make things safer. We'd do what we needed to. Uh, but we, we, we need to call ourselves to, uh, uh, to a higher standard at this point and, and really, really spend time. And, and, and I mean, really like investigate the piece of the children in this household, uh, you know, uh, uh, school age children in this household. Uh, when you, when you see, you hear of a traumatic incident that happens in a household, domestic, a drug, a drug situation, uh, an overdose, anything like that, 90% of the time, those children are going to school the next day. We all know that. I think I'll talk a little bit about that. It, it, it's, it's, it's easy. Mom, mom might be in the hospital being treated for an injury. Dad might be in court. It might be the other way around. Uh, but those children are typically in school. If we don't pass on that information, it's a critical opportunity for us and it would be quite a missed opportunity to not at least pass on information so that they know that child there that day is not gonna be up to par and they're gonna misread some of the distractions in a child or you know, not listening to a teacher or not turning in homework. And they could misread some of the behavior as uh, and, and, and instill discipline and we've seen that. We've seen that uh, children have been disciplined for situations that they're just dealing with from what happened the night prior. So I just wanna to say to my colleagues, it's important to become a Handle with Care community. Uh, it means a lot. Uh, I think it would be quite a missed opportunity uh, for us to have that front row seat and not make that connection. I'm fortunate enough in Plymouth to have um, four uh, school resource offices. So my school resource offices simply read, the, read the, uh, the logs every day and they'll make connection with the schools. We have supervisors that read the reports and will notify that school's SRO so they can make contact with, with the counselors or the staff uh, or the principal at that school. Uh, I think that um, over the past several years, we, we've been constantly knocking down these barriers, these challenges we've had, even with our Plymouth County Outreach Program with public health and law enforcement, the DA's office, the sheriff, the courts, uh, the schools, all those, all those barriers that are self-imposed barriers have been knocked down and we've created these partnerships and through those partnerships, obviously relationships grow and you can simply pick, pick up the phone and make contact with someone. Uh, there'll, be no, no, there'll be no more important uh, situation than trying to connect and provide support to a child in school the next day. So I just encourage you to do it. Um, I know I was only given five minutes. I'm at three minutes and 15 seconds. I'm doing really well. But I do want to mention one thing that, that just recently happened to me and it, it's, it's, it's interesting it happened this weekend. I, I spoke with an individual this weekend, just, just during my regular uh, civilian life. And it came up and this individual said, you don't remember me, you probably won't. And I don't. And they said uh, almost 20 years ago uh, that we were in the schools and that he, he was a part of a, a family that had a lot of problems. His dad was in and out of jail. Uh, his entire family was in and out of jail and he went through a lot. And he said, there was a conversation that I had with him that was brief, just enough to say, hey, you're not alone in this, you can make it through. He's got three kids and a wonderful family now. So a small thing like that, I don't think you can minimize that contact, whether it's an SRO 
or a, a, a uniform officer on the street or a supervisor or anyone. And it doesn't even have to be police. Any of these agencies represented here, a short conversation with a child, you, you just don't know how impactful that will be. Uh, it's phenomenal to me that almost 20 years later, he not only remembers the conversations, but he knows it was with me. So very interesting. And I, I really feel like um, we should get all 27 communities in this handle as handle with care communities. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you so much, Chief. Um, I just want to remind everyone, and for those who weren't on in the beginning, we'll be doing questions at the end. So if you have questions for the Chief, go ahead and put those in the chat um, and we'll address those at the end. And if you haven't signed in, please do that. Let us know um, <coughs> your name, what organization you're with, and your email address. So next up, we're going to have Captain Timothy Lacateur from the Brockton Fire Department. Hello, good morning, everyone. Um, I just, I'll be uh, very brief. So um, Handle With Care is very, very new to the Brockton Fire Department. We did a, uh, through uh, Dr. Muse, who is the uh, overall EMS coordinator for the Brockton uh, EMS system. He's at Brockton Hospital. He did a, um, an EMS Zoom rounds with Handle With Care immediately. Um, my deputy, Deputy Jeff Marchetti, seized upon the opportunity and he, he uh, tasked me when we started uh, doing a little investigation and we realized that this is actually the sort of um, program that we've kind of desired to have in Brockton. And what this does is what it's going to do is vastly expand our outreach for the community. Um, this is going to give our members the tools really to um, see like in dealing with ACE is a lot of hidden issues with children. And it's really uh, the way we respond on calls. And um, I'm sure all the, the uh, police officers and the fire who are in this Zoom meeting, they understand that most of the time it's the police, the fire and EMS. And everyone has a different role, but the fire and the EMS are kind of working together where the police there have a, a different mission altogether. But this way, this increases the number of like eyes on the scene. And this allows us um, to actually, we'll be able to take a look around and see maybe come into a situation where it's, um, it's not really require a 51A, which is a mandated, a mandated reporter, but or a, that would be um, like a mandatory report. But this would give us the extra tools to say, hey, maybe this child needs a little bit of help and this child's in school, and this is gonna give us a central process where we can route this up like a chain of command. We can have a point of contact with the school department and we can just say, exactly, I think the chief hit on this and the district attorney, uh, Mr. Cruz as well, that you know, th this child really needs some help. So um, you know, they may not be performing this well in school over the next couple of weeks, but now that we're gonna be able to give the, the teachers in the school department, we're gonna be able to give them the uh, information up front. It can really make a difference in the child's life and, we're really looking forward to implementing this. Um, we're hoping to be, we're almost shovel ready. I'm hoping to have this live and ready in my community uh, for the fire at least by um, the third week in March. And like I said, this is really an excellent opportunity. I really thank you guys for having this and putting this together. And like, we really appreciate this. And like, this is just one more tool that we're gonna have to help our community. Thank you, we're glad you're here too. Um, next up is Brian Palladino, who's the principal at PCIS Implement. Go ahead, Brian. Thank you. Um, so I'm just going to briefly talk about how the school handles our uh, handle and care and, and the, the work that we've done and uh, the support. And I, this is my 24th year in education. And in the, before handle and care, you would have these situations where you'd be like, oh, I wish I had that information because we would have done things a little differently or we would have been able to provide support for the students and even the families. Um, so ha since then, having that information has been instrumental in how we handle students with the ACEs and with things that are going on, not only uh, with police, but sometimes families give us information that's very important. We're trying to you know, continue to encourage that communication so we can put things in place for our students. So, uh, you know, when we get information from the police, and I know uh, the chief and the SRO is again, instrumental in this and being that team approach. And I'm glad to see the fire because we've had situations when there was fires at home and the kids are coming in the next day. Um, and, and if we don't have that information, then you know we can't put things in place. So I'm just gonna talk about what we were able to do with handle and care with our students. So if we get information from the police, from DCF, uh, from families, from neighbors, we're able to give, uh, very information just for to teachers to let them know something happened this and we call them TLCs so it's tender love and care so we're going to provide a little tender love and care for these students um, so if a teacher notices a kid acting out or a kid withdrawn 
a uh, kid with a head down on the desk. They already have that information. They get a red envelope. And all that red envelope means is something's going on. We just need to treat this student uh, a little different. Uh, we give them an open pass. So if they're feeling like they need to see a counselor, uh, we let the nurse, it's a real team approach. We need to let the nurse know because we've had kids who have been taken from their homes in the middle of the night and haven't slept. So we let the nurses know. So if the kid needs to go and lay down for a little bit, the nurse is aware. We bring the calf involved. We get the calf involved. So sometimes we provide you know, breakfast, lunch, we send kids home uh, with food as well, depending on what the situation is. So it's a real team approach. Um, you know, we also through uh, Handle With Care, we've established a uh, donation fund uh, where we we have uh, gift cards for clothes. So we sometimes go, we're lucky enough to be across the street from Kohl's where we'll, uh, last year we had a situation, uh, we actually went to Kohl's and were able to buy the students and their families uh, what they need in that moment. Um, we have a food pantry where, again, uh, depending on what the situation is, you know, we're able to provide even that, that type of support. So it just allows us to have an understanding of what's going on, um, you know, if there's something going on. And, and in the end, uh, the, the child feels supported. And sometimes you see those behaviors diminish because they know if I need something, you know, there, there is support from a counselor, from a nurse from a cafeteria worker, from an SRO, from an administrator. Um, I think it's it, it's something that that allowed us to, to change what we're doing and that information we always wanted, uh, we have it and we have a, an idea of, uh, of what's, uh, what's going on. Uh, and, it, and teachers don't need a whole lot of information. It's not like you're giving the life story of the child, you're just letting them know, you know there, there's something that happened. Um, you know, I'll give you another example. We had a kid whose dog died um, and, and was struggling. Um, and we were able to handle, give that kid some TLC and the teachers were aware that something happened and it, and it really just, uh, you know, sometimes information is power and, and for a teacher to know they can be, you know, sensitive to the fact that there, there's a lot going on. So, um, I would say as a school, we've changed since, uh, handle with care, uh, for the better. Uh, I think it makes our children more successful. It makes our teachers better teachers because they have, you know, an understanding of what's happening um, so I can't say enough. I would encourage anybody to reach out. Um, if you need any more information, I, I added my email. Um, so, and it, it's just, and, it, and I have to say, it's a great relationship between the police and the schools. Um, and having that relationship is huge too, because they know, you know, they're looking for signs of children in homes and they know that the schools are going to want this information and use the information for, for the better. And ultimately, hopefully it, it helps children and families. So, um, I think. That's it. Thank you so much, Brian. And then last up, um, we have John Snellgrove from the Brockton Public School System. Thanks. Hi, everyone. Um, as Katie said, John Snellgrove, Brockton Public Schools, um, coordinator of school social workers and school psychologists. So the school social workers are, you know, we have several in, in, in all of our buildings. Um, they're the ones that work closely with our uh, Rockton Police Department. And I'm super excited that we now have, or we soon will have our, our friends at the fire department involved in this as well. This initiative honestly is best practice in whichever discipline, whichever field you're in, uh, we always look to do best practice. This truly is the best practice when you're talking about community collaboration and helping our kids. So, you know, in non-pandemic times, we have our kids about six and a half hours a day. Um, during their um, time, they're not with us. Unfortunately, um, sometimes um, life isn't always so great for them. And so many children who witness domestic violence, a parent or sibling overdose, police raid, drive-by shootings, et cetera, it's difficult developmentally for them to process that they're not eagerly most of them aren't eagerly coming in to say let me tell you what happened last night sometimes that happens but oftentimes as we know boys tend to i'm not generalizing but research shows boys tend to act out uh, physically verbally aggressively etc and those actions in schools are punished kids get sent to the principal's office they're missing time they're missing uh time on instruction learning etc sometimes Girls, and this 
isn't always the case, but sometimes girls, you know, hold that in, fly under the radar. They're more introverted. They're quiet. They shut down. As someone said earlier, put their head down. Um, again, hyper vigilant, uh, hyper focused on something else, another situation, another person in their lives. They too are not learning. So either way, this is dramatically impacting their education. Uh, so their academic well-being, their emotional well-being, et cetera. I can't speak any high, any more highly then we need this in every community. Um, what typically happens and what, what proves successful is that when we get the call early in the day, um, it's the handle with care, principal, school adjustment counselor, school nurse, and the teacher are made aware. Handle with care, Johnny Jones. And they don't go running up to Johnny Jones and say, tell me what happened. They don't, you know, they don't do that because we're not sure if Johnny Jones was home. There might have been uh, a situation where police were dispatched to the home and they saw, you know, a bedroom of a student, uh, a younger student. Uh, so there's evidence somebody lives there, but maybe they didn't see the child. That still needs to be reported um, so that we understand something happened at Johnny Jones's home. And then what happens specifically is the council will go and meet with Johnny Jones, just a, a general check-in. Hey, did you see the Celtics game last night? Or, you know, what do you think about the Bruins? Or, you know, we finally got some nice weather, something to engage that student um, to try to get a mental health kind of status on how the child is doing. Um, often then it's when the, the student will say, oh, last night, police came or, you know, my mother overdosed or what have you. Um, like other folks have said, you know, the cafeteria folks uh, are, are made aware that if Johnny Jones needs extra food uh, for lunch, he gets it. If he needs food brought home, if we think that that's the case, then we, you know, send that home. Uh, the nurse is involved. If Johnny needs to rest, um, if there's that need, then Johnny's allowed to rest. If he needs extra motor breaks, the teacher is given a free pass to you know, give him busy jobs. Can you go, you know, talk to the principal and bring him this envelope, but do this or do that. Just trying to be that kind of blanket of support for that child. And then oftentimes, as I said, when children then share what had happened, it's the school counselor then can act, right? Can can call the family and, and um, take the appropriate steps. And often it's, you know, relying on our community partners whether that is, you know, our friends at the food pantries, or we have some nonprofits we work closely with, um, and then, you know, counseling agencies, et cetera. If it is a mandated reporter, you know, we do follow up with that because the child disclosed something to us in school. So it's that wraparound blanket of support that is truly best practice that I am super excited and thankful to Plymouth County DA and, uh, and Ed Jacobs and everyone for, you know, rejuvenating this here in Brockton. It, it happened for a while and it was hugely successful. And then, you know, we could be doing it better and uh, more regularly. So having the uh, friends at the fire department and, and EMTs eventually, um, it just increases the likelihood that we'll be aware and increases the likelihood that early on we can support that child so that he or she isn't getting penalized for maladaptive behavior in the classroom. So I, I can't thank you enough, and I strongly encourage others to, to follow suit. Thank you so much, John. Um, I want to thank the DA and all four of our panelists. Are there any questions from anyone? Um, go ahead and put those in the chat, and we'll call those out. Katie, it looks like we have a question, um, unique situation from Freetown Lakeville Regional, right? So they're crossing two counties and um, Ed Jacobs, I'm gonna call on you, but generally I would say that we would definitely be willing to partner with Bristol and Ed, I don't know if you know off the top of your head, any contacts down there, we could do some training um, or um, some co-facilitation to streamline that process. Yeah, I think we've done some of this with um in regards to uh thank you for that uh bridgewater rainham so rainham's obviously in bristol and 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 bridgewater is in plymouth county yeah so we're, we're willing to it doesn't i don't think it matters we can make some phone calls and and uh try to establish it's all about establishing the relationships and those lines of communication it shouldn't be a a, a deal breaker okay. yeah so val if you want to reach out to us after the meeting we're happy to coordinate and set up a kind of a post meeting and help to triage some of that Oh, <clears throat> sorry, I saw, had a question 
about um, sharing the information, um, maybe Ed or I think John touched on this, but um, can you talk about um, how the uh, child's privacy is protected and how you're able to share information without um, breaking any uh, protocol in terms of privacy? Yeah, I, I, I will do that. And I think Chief Boteri, I'm gonna ask you to jump in with me. But we're really, and when we do the training, that's why we're, we're part of what we're saying today is if you would like to do this, let us help you because we'll give you what the standard has been both in Massachusetts and across the country. Uh, but we're really, we're, all we're sharing is that child's name and the date of the incident. So we really need to do uh, training with the schools to let school teachers know they go, well, we want more information. Well, you know, you might, you're probably not going to get it. Although a lot of this stuff ends up in the newspaper sometimes, right? But you, you want it so it's time appropriate the day after, right? Right is, you know, so you can get that child early rather than wait two or three days. Uh, but it's really nothing more than the child's name and um, the date. And then when we, when we do the training in the schools, that way the schools uh, have some techniques, what we like to say tools in their tool belt uh, to address those issues. Um, Chief Boteri, you, you, you have a, a opinion about this. I know you and I have had a conversation. Could you share yeah, that with I us? I do. Uh, yeah, I agree with you, Ed. I mean, obviously we wanna protect the information as much as we can. There's a fine line between that and, and sharing some information. I think that uh, under specific statutes, um, you're allowed to share any information that a police department would reasonably believe would would uh, cause a safer environment in the school. So if you have a situation that you think could cause disruption in the school, you can share a little more information than, than Ed's talking about. That doesn't mean you give a copy of reports or you, you share everything, but you can get, you can get be a little bit more uh, uh, inclusive of some specific facts. If in your mind, you can reasonably believe that Without sharing the information, it could have some impact on the school environment, the safety of the environment, the school. And I, I would say that most situations we deal with, some maybe a drug search warrant at a house one night and the child goes to school. I don't think it's a big stress to think there could be some interaction with the child and someone else about it in school and cause disruption. So I put that out there. Um, and Ed's right. I mean, I, I share a little bit more, I think, than, than most, but I do it under that premise and it's worked very well for me. I've never had an issue. We're not like we say sharing reports, but we do want to give ideas in some ways if we can reasonably do that. So uh, I would say, you know, fellow police departments, chiefs and command staff people uh, definitely, you know, put that in the minds of your school resource officers and, and let them know that they're, they're not going to be violating anything as long as they can reasonably think that what they're doing is going to make a safer school environment that day. Yeah. Uh, lastly, I would say in my uh, 40 something years of um, working with kids and in the courts, et cetera, I've never seen uh, uh, information shared that it was detrimental to the child, but I have seen in too many occasions where information was not shared and that child uh, really, as they say, fell through the cracks or uh, was uh, adversely affected. So I, I, again, we're just sharing the name. We just want a, a caring adult to put a set of eyes on those kids to uh, help them through the day. And if, if I can jump on that too, I mean, most likely, most likely the teachers are going to get the name and the date, but the counselor themselves may get a little bit more information because they're going to be providing a lot of the support that, uh, regarding the incident. So not, you know, if you get information from the chief, we get information from the chief, we're not going to give details to every person in the school, every person that sees that kid. Most, it's going to be, just let you know, something, you know, happened, he's going to need a little TLC, but the counselor may, may get a little more information and the administrator. So okay, there's no. also an, another question in here for you, Brian, to see if you could share a little more about the fund that was established to provide resources to families in need and how yep. it was done and how you generated the funds. Yep. So we did it based on donations. So um, we do uh, jeans day on a Friday. So you pay a few bucks and you get to wear jeans on Friday. Uh, during the holidays, um, you know, what we try to do is we, uh, if staff want to donate, instead of buying gift cards for each other if they want to donate to uh, that fund. Um, it was actually a fund that was started from a, a guidance council that passed away um, about uh, 15 years ago. And we started in her name. And, um, and then also with that, um, her family has kind of kept that alive as well by, by making donations. But it, it'll grow. And, and if it gets low, uh, we'll put it out there that the Courtney Green Fund is low. Does anyone want to make it? It's you know $10, $5, and plus those those jeans days uh, that, that, that we have as a staff. So it's all staff driven. 
Um, and it's been really successful. So when we get low, if everyone throws in $10, it, you know, it generates enough, uh, enough money. Um, the food pantry is more, we do, we do uh, food drives throughout the year, uh, particularly during, uh, before vacation. So whatever's left over from there, we put into a, a room and then we were able to grab uh, food from there for if there's, if there's that need as well. Um, so it's been great. Any other questions? Katie, I'm wondering if this is a good time to just um, for school personnel to just talk a little bit about to the complementing training with TLPI. Because we, it seems we have a lot of school personnel on here. It might be helpful just for those folks to know that there are resources in addition to handle with care, um, the training that we do for trauma sensitive schools. Linda, I can jump in on that if you want me to. Um, yeah. My name is Kelly Maycumber. I, I work for Plymouth Public Schools, but um, I'm federally funded through a prevention grant to do substance use prevention. So a lot of these things end up, you know, coming across my desk or just, you know, falling into my lap kind of because it fits. And I think um, I couldn't help but think the whole time when we're talking about handle with care, it's just very simple in nature. I think a lot of times people want like a package program to come to their door and it's really not that. It's just a really good working relationship between police and schools. And I think Plymouth has thrived because the relationship between schools and police is so strong. But the training that um, you provide, the TLPI training, I think it really just accentuates why it's so important to have these kids that are experiencing trauma get the services they need. So when the staff and really anybody in the school, not necessarily just a teacher, but adjustment counselors, guidance counselors, anyone from custodians to bus drivers to paras, anyone that might need it, I think it's important for them to connect why trauma is so negatively impactful on a young person and why it's important for the schools to jump in, not just for, you know, the clothes they need, the food they might need, which are obviously basic needs, but just the support that they might need after that thing happens to them. Um, I think that there's a lack of understanding that trauma, you know, really affects the way the brain works. I think sometimes we just as people think, you know, oh no, like the poor kid, that was really traumatic for them. But in reality, the way that it's affecting how they develop is going to be at risk and getting them the services they need is important. So for Plymouth, I feel like that training allows people to see why it's important. And then the handle with care program really, you know, it accentuates that relationship so we can keep finding the kids that need the help the most. That so, was great, Kelly. Thank, um, you. thank you, Kelly, that's awesome. And just so that every, the school personnel on the call know, um, the district attorney's office does have funds through a grant to pay for those trainings. So if your school, or your district has not had the TLPI um, helping traumatized children learn training, please reach out to us. We're gonna, I'm gonna put a link in the chat in just a bit with um, sort of a feedback form to fill out. And then Faith Parent, who's on the call from the Family Center will be your contact for helping to set up those trainings. All right, um, we'll stick around a little bit longer if anybody else has questions or anything else they wanna talk through with us. Um, I am gonna put that link to the interest form in the chat right now. Um, it's three questions long plus your contact information. It really isn't that long. Um, if you're interested in setting up a Handle With Care program or getting some other kind of training, please go to this um, website on our Handle With Care Massachusetts uh, webpage. This is probably the easiest way. That way we have your contact information. We can reach out to you. Um, you can also reach out to me. It was my email on the um, invite for today's meeting. You can reach out directly to me if you'd rather do that. But we're so grateful that you guys took the time to be here. Um, we encourage you to reach out to us. And again, I wanna reiterate what the DA said that the DA's office is committed to making this as easy as possible. We'll provide all the training, all the materials, everything free of charge. Um, we just, we'd like to see each community be able to do this successfully.